So the topic is reaction mechanisms. So the main idea behind reaction mechanisms is that most chemical reactions do not occur in a single step, but rather through several steps. So if we consider this chemical reaction right here, where we have 2NO2 plus Cl2 yields 2ClNO2, right? If we consider this chemical reaction, what is this reaction actually telling us? Well, it tells us what we start out with, that's the reactants. It tells us what we end up with, that's the products. In other words, we know the starting line, we know the finish line, but we don't know everything in between. We don't know the journey. We know the destination, but we don't know the process by which the reactants become products. And that's what reaction mechanisms tell us. So the reaction mechanism is more thorough than the balanced chemical equation. It is the series of steps by which an overall reaction occurs. So again, if we take a look at this reaction here that we saw in the previous slide, well, what is the mechanism for this reaction? What is the process by which the reactants become products? Now, the thing about mechanisms is that mecha mechanisms can never be proven to be 100% true. Uh, they can be validated, but they can't be proven. And the reason why is because you can't interview the molecules to say, hey, what were you before you became what you are? How did you get from reactant to product, right? All you can do is make a case and build evidence as to what a mechanism is, but you can't prove it to be 100% true. You can only validate it. So keeping that in mind, that's going to that's gonna come in handy later on, but keeping that in mind, let's look at the proposed mechanism for this chemical reaction. So there are two steps here. These steps, by the way, are called elementary steps. Um, most oftentimes you'll just hear them called steps uh, for short, but they are, the technical term for them is elementary steps. So this is the overall um, the two-step process by which the reactants in that chemical equation that we saw a moment ago become products. We have NO2 plus Cl2 yields ClNO2 plus Cl. That's step one. And then step two is NO2 plus Cl yields ClNO2, right? Now, one of the requirements for a mechanism to be valid is that the sum of the individual steps of the mechanism must sum to be the, uh, the overall chemical equation, right? So in other words, when we add steps one and two together, the sum of those chemical equations must be identical to the overall balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Now, there's a name for substances like this Cl here, right? So notice that the Cl, right, the individual Cl, I'm not talking about the Cl2, but the individual chlorine atom, not the diatomic chlorine molecule, is consumed in the first step of the react, or excuse me, it's, it's produced <laughs> in the first step of the reaction, and then it is consumed in the second step of the reaction. And so you don't see any Cl without a two. You don't see any individual chlorine atoms in the overall balanced chemical equation. But nevertheless, this individual chlorine atom uh, plays a very important role in the chemical reaction. And these types of substances that are produced in one step and are consumed in another they are called reaction intermediates. So again, there's nothing in the overall balanced chemical equation for this reaction that will tell you anything about the reaction intermediates. If you want to learn about the reaction intermediates, uh, you have to consider the reaction mechanism. What does all of this have to do with chemical kinetics? Well, chemical kinetics is actually a tool that can be used to uh, understand reaction mechanisms. It, it, it's a tool like, let's say you have a, a chemical reaction that you're studying, and I want to know what's the mechanism for this chemical reaction? What is the, the process by which the reactants become products? How many steps are there in the mechanism? And what exactly is going on in those individual steps? And what types of atoms and molecules are involved, right? If you want to know that information, chemical kinetics can be a very valuable tool for that. And the reason why is because of a concept called uh, molecularity right? So we understand rate laws, right? They describe the relationship between the rate of a chemical reaction and the concentration of the reactants. And so if you wanted to look at rate laws for elementary steps, uh, we're going to have to invoke a term called molecularity. Molecularity is simply the number of reactant particles that are involved in an elementary step. So the rate law, right? The rate law of an, of an overall chemical reaction, cannot be determined simply by looking at the balanced chemical equation. However, 
the rate law of an elementary step of a mechanism can be determined from the equation associated with that step. And so, again, molecularity, that's the number of reactant particles involved. Um, you have unimolecular processes. These are the simplest. It's basically just one particle, one molecule decomposing into products. Then we have another type of molecularity. It's called bimolecular, where you have two particles. And there's two possibilities here with a bimolecular process or a, a bimolecular elementary step. Either you have two particles of the same type, which we're calling A, colliding together to become products, or we have um, two different particles, which we'll call A and B, uh, coming together to form the products. Now there's a third type of molecularity. It's called termolecular, uh, and that's when you have three particles coming together and colliding. Uh, but termolecular processes are actually very, very rare. And the reason why they're rare is because the probability of three individual particles colliding together at the exact same time is very, very low. Uh, nonetheless, it does occasionally happen. And there's three possibilities with uh, termolecular molecularities <laughs> where we have three identical particles colliding together, A plus A plus A. We have um, uh, two of one type of particle and one of another type of particle colliding together, A plus A plus B. And this one down here is when three unique particles, which we'll call A, B, and C, uh, collide to become products. So when we're, t when we're looking at these elementary steps, right, what we're really looking at is collisions of particles, atoms slamming into atoms, molecules slamming into molecules to produce something different. So if we just uh, look at a summary of the rate laws for the uh, different types of elementary steps based on their molecularity, well, you can sort of see the pattern here if you take a look at this table, right? For the unimolecular process, one particle decomposing into products, the rate is simply equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the reactant. If it's a bimolecular process, where you have two of the same particle colliding together, uh, then the rate will be equal to the rate constant times the concentration of that particular reactant squared. If you have two different particles colliding together in a bimolecular fashion, then the rate is going to be equal to K times the concentration of one of those particles and uh, time, also times the concentration of uh, the other type of particle, right? So I'm not going to go through each individual one of these rows. I think you can understand the pattern is that the rate law of an elementary step is going to be K times the concentration of that particle uh, raised to the power of how many particles in, in that step there are. If there's one particle, it'll just be the concentration of that reactant with no squared or cubed or anything like that. And if it's two particles, uh, it'll be um, of the same type, it'll be the concentration of that reactant squared. If it's two different particles, then it'll be the concentration of each of those reactants, uh, as we just saw in the third row of this table. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to watch the full video from which this clip was taken, click the box over there on the left. And if you'd like to watch my entire chemical kinetics playlist, click the box on the right. Thank you very much for watching and take care.